Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm making a Fender Tone Stack bass guitar preamp, aka boost only preamp. It's ideal to install in a bass guitar, and I will show that in this video, but today I'll be building it into a stomp box. So I'm not really sure who first came up with the name Boost Only to describe this type of preamp, but I suspect it might have been Roger Sadowski, and that's because he's been using this type of preamp in his instruments for maybe 25 years or more. Uh, the Aggie OBP-1 is a very similar circuit. I believe it was designed by the same bloke, but probably the most well-known Boost Only preamp would be the Bartolini TCT, made famous, of course, by the great Marcus Miller and his beautiful 77 jazz bass. There are a few others. There's a pedal from the 80s called a Korg Tone Booster. These circuits are all designed in a way to emulate the preamps that are in most of Leo Fender's classic valve amps, believe it or not. The tone stack itself is actually a really lossy filter, so in these preamps you'll find it sandwiched between a couple of gain stages. Fender, of course, used two halves of a 12AX7. I'm pretty sure Sadowski and Aguila use a FET common source amp, either side of the filter. But for this project, I'm keeping it simple and I'm just using a dual op amp as my gain stages. I will get further into the circuit in just a sec, but for now, I've got to drill out my box so I can get on with spraying it. So the first thing I've got to do is actually work out where all these parts are going to fit. Now for this project, I'm actually recycling this little box. It did have a project in it uh, years ago that I rebuilt and rehoused. So that's why I've actually primed it, uh, because I've done a bunch of fills for some holes that were already drilled in it, and this helps cover the plasti bond. It also gives the uh, box a uniform white base coat, because I'm using a nice bright red uh, paint, and it'll help me get that bright red color in just one or two coats. I've also decided that I do want to have a battery snap in it. Um, it's optional, of course. In fact, a lot of pedal builders and, and even quite large pedal companies don't bother with battery snaps anymore. Everyone has pedal boards, I guess, these days. But I can kind of see with my use that I will occasionally need to use it on batteries, so I am going to go to the effort of putting a battery snap in. Uh, my stomp switch is going to go down here and is going to help hold the battery in place. The input jack I'm going to use is this guy because it's got a metal chassis to it, which means I can use this as my main earth lug and the jack will actually earth the housing for shielding purposes. The output jack I've chosen has a plastic housing, which means its sleeve connect is isolated from the box. This is to reduce the chance of earth loops and hum. I'm actually going with 16 mil pots. I can actually just fit three abreast. I'll have three pot casings, nice and flat, and I can mount the board onto the backs of those. So they'll go in there like that. Uh, then my DC jack will probably be offset one side or the other. Uh, so it runs sort of between the pots. And then finally, I just have to drill for my LED, which is another part I'm kind of recycling. It's a tiny little three millimeter LED that I found in one of my parts bins, and I think I'm just going to go traditional, just in the middle at the top with that little guy. So here's my painted and drilled project box all ready to go. There was a couple of specks of dust on the top, so I gave it a very light sand with 1200 grit paper. 
Uh, that's because I want it nice and flat for when I put the water slide decal on. This is a design and some labels that I've created in Photoshop and then just printed that out. I've also given it a couple of coats of clear lacquer to seal the ink. To be honest, the quickest and simplest way to create just basic labeling that looks fairly neat and kind of professional, I guess, is with uh, dry press lettering. I use it all the time because you can just put your final clear coat straight over the top. So here's the schematic. It's a very simple circuit, but it works really well. You've got the fender tone stack in the middle and it's sandwiched between two op amp gain stages. The tone stack itself has been scaled to work with 10K pots instead of the typical 250K pots that you find in most fender amps. That's because the output impedance of an op amp is much, much lower than a typical valve stage. And this means the signal here is less susceptible to hum, and it means I can keep the input impedance of the gain recovery stage lower as well for lower noise. The first op amp has a gain of 6 dB, and this guy has a gain of 15 dB. This way, with the treble and bass turned all the way down and the volume turned all the way up, you get something pretty close to a flat response with no overall boost. Then if you turn up the bass, you get up to 16 dB of boost around 40 Hz. And if you crank the treble, you'll get around 20 dB of boost around 7K. So with the filter control set in the middle and the volume around two or three o'clock, you get about 4 dB of bass and treble boost and 4 dB of mid cut. And that's really why I'm building this into a stomp box. So I can use it as a slap contour and kick it in and out whenever I want to, even in the middle of a song. I thought I might also use it uh, when I practice bass with headphones because the bass boost and mid cut that you can get with a Fender tone stack means, well, it sort of counteracts the, the really mid rangey sort of tone you get when you plug a bass directly into a sound card. So here's my stripboard layout. It is a bit fiddly to put together, but the parts are crammed up like this to keep it small enough so you can use it as an onboard bass preamp. The board itself will measure around about an inch and a half by an inch wide, so it should fit in, in most bass guitars. Notice that the 200 picofarad caps C2 and C7 have a space to one side of them, and that's because these little ceramic uh, caps have a 5mm lead pitch. So to fit them across two tracks, you just have to bend one lead in like that and uh, orientate it so that it's kind of hanging out on the lower side. Also notice that the two one mic caps, C5 and C6, uh, fit just across one track as well. And that's because I'm using these little tiny monolithic caps. So if you straighten these legs out like that, they'll also fit across two adjacent tracks. One mic green caps or MKTs will be too big for this layout, I'm afraid. The other thing to mention, if I just go back to the schematic quickly, is that wire three is actually connected to three pot lugs. You can run a wire to say the treble pot and then another wire across to connect up to the two pot lugs on the base pot, but I'm gonna run uh, two wires the same color from the board one to the anti-clockwise lug on the treble pot and then the other two the middle and clockwise lugs of the base pot. So here's the rear view. Most of the cuts are in this line down the middle and the layout is symmetrical so the board is very quick and easy to make. As I mentioned this circuit works really well as an onboard bass preamp uh, especially if you're into that Marcus Miller sort of tone with a thick bass and kind of scooped mids and strong treble but there is a couple of tweaks I'd recommend. So here's the onboard version of the schematic. Firstly, I've reduced the gain of the second op amp. This way, with the treble and bass controls in the center, you won't get a big jump between active and passive. You'll just get that smiley face EQ contour. In other words, a slight treble and bass boost and a slight mid cut. Another thing I've changed with the onboard version is that I've scaled the tone stack to work with 25K pots. And that's because 25K is a much more guitar-friendly pot value. Uh, EMG, Aguilar, Sadowski, they all use 25K audio taper pots, um, and Stumac, All Parts, and most of those online guitar parts stores uh, will sell 25K audio taper guitar pots. Um, not to mention all the eBay, eBay and AliExpress sellers. So what that means is that you can get 
push pull pots, for example, in 25K. You can get dual concentric or stacked pots in 25K. Um, and most importantly, you can get 25K ohm audio taper pots with a good long thread so that if you're installing the preamp into a base with a rear route, it means you can get it through you know, a quarter inch of timber. And finally, notice the volume pot has been replaced with this 220K resistor that runs down to earth. Active base volume pots are normally up front between the pickups and the preamp input, so you can have active passive switching. So this resistor does a couple of jobs that the Stompbox volume pot was doing. It keeps the output cap happy by pulling its negative side down to zero volts, and it also bleeds its charge, so your active passive switch won't pop. Now, since we don't need the LED resistor, which was in here, it means I can use this track as another earth by installing this bent jumper wire. So now you can fit the 220K resistor from the output cap down to earth right here. There's other ways you could do it, of course, but this way the layout stays the same. Just remember to install the jumper first because it goes underneath the IC socket. So I better get on and put this thing together. Thank you.
here it is all finished. I ended up using three coats of semi-gloss clear and as you can see I also ordered some knobs especially for it. I was going to use these little red ones because I already had them in my parts bins but uh, I went to the trouble of ordering these from Pedal Parts Australia just because I think they look the part. If you want to hear it in action, uh, well you kind of already have because I used it on the bass in the track you've just been listening to so maybe grab some headphones and duck back to the start of the montage or the build montage and you can hear it in action. The bass uh, when I was recording was set flat um, and of course I did use a little compression on the track you kind of have to when you mix music but apart from that this was really doing all the tone shaping and it uh, works really well I think. For the build I used a TL072 dual op amp kind of an old school op amp but uh, it works really well. I think it's a good compromise between battery life and audio quality. In the next couple of days I'm going to post a PDF onto my website with uh, both the uh, stomp box schematic as well as the onboard base preamp schematic and some wiring diagrams and some other info so check that out. In the meantime, uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, let me know what you think of this build, especially if you've made it, let me know in the comments. And um, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.